Welcome back to Tanya in 5. The last few days we have been studying chapter 2 of book 2. In chapter 1 we explained level 1 in understanding how our world and its existence does not pose a contradiction to the singularity and oneness of God. This is because the world is not an independent existence. It is continuously dependent on the continuous investor on God's part to keep it in existence, not just to keep it alive, but to actually keep it in existence at all. And were God to retrieve the energy he invests in creation even for a moment, the world will revert back to absolute nothingness. In chapter 2, we take this to another level. Namely, it's not merely that the world is a reality, a true reality, but its reality is dependent on God. But deeper, it is that the world is not a true reality. It is in essence still nothing. It just so happens to be that God is bringing it into being. So let's explain. The rule is, the principle is, that any true novelty requires continuous effort to keep that novelty in existence. So let's think of this in three stages. Stage one, I take a silver bar and I reshape it into a cup. Now here, I didn't create anything new. All I did was give it a new shape. Deeper, I didn't even create a new shape. The bar of silver contained within it before I even touched it. Endless possibilities of shapes. It could have been a spoon, it could have been a cup, it could have been a plate. All I've done was revealed one of its endless possible permutations. I have taken the silver bar and manifest it in one of its endless potentials. So I haven't created anything new, I haven't even created a new shape. All I've done is expressed one of the potential shapes it already had. And because I didn't create anything new, therefore I shape the cup, I walk away, and the cup does not need me there to keep it in existence because there's nothing really new. Level two, I have a bowl of water. I take a straw and I stick one end into the water and the other end I blow as hard as I can. And as a result, I split the water in two. Now here, there is a novelty in the water. Water ordinarily flows to the lowest point and here it's standing. Now why is it standing? Because there's an external force, my air, keeping it apart and keeping it standing. Now because here I've made a novelty in that flowing water is now standing, it requires the continuous effort of the external force, the air, me blowing in it, to keep it standing. Let's take this even further. Even while as the water is standing because of the air that I'm blowing into it, the water in essence did not become standing water. The water in essence is still flowing. It just happens to be an external force imposing upon it a novelty that it should stand. But in essence, even while that novelty is imposed upon it, it remains in its original nature of flowing water. But because there's a novelty that I'm imposing upon the water, it requires the continuous effort of my external force to blow in the water to keep it standing. Now this takes us to level three, creation. In creation, this is the absolute novelty because cry prior to creation, there is nothing. When it comes to the water and me blowing into the water, then air exists, water exists, and I've taken water and overpowered, I've taken air, I'm sorry, and overpowered the water, superimposing a novelty within the water and thus required to continuously keep it going. When it comes to creation, there is no material with which God created the world that God is superimposing some sort of uh, uh, change in some existence. Nothing is there. The existence of the world in its inherent state is a novelty. And just as we said, all novelties must inherently revert back to its original inherent nature, just like the water must revert back to flowing because that's its inherent nature. 
So likewise, all of existence, its inherent nature is to not be, because there was nothing prior to its per current state of beingness. And therefore, even while it stands, it's only the external force that keeps the world in existence. But in essence, it really does not exist. It's the external force of the divine investure through the words described in chapter 1, the words of Torah that contain within it the power to create that keeps it going. But in essence, it's truly nothing. The takeaway from all of this is every single thing we see in this world, every single thing we encounter, is currently bought, being brought into creation by God. And it is nothing other than divine words saying it shall be. And thus, everything we see is divine communication to us. And are we listening? Looking forward to seeing you when we conclude chapter 3.